Pat, it's Maximus here. This time with a review of the Black & Decker DR560 800 RPM triple gear reduction 7 amp half inch <laughs> reversible drill. So, if you're in the market for a half inch drill to maybe do some like mixing or run some larger auger bits, self feed bits, but you didn't want to spend the money on a DeWalt or a Milwaukee. And this is a 2010 unit. So, you know, you are looking at the DeWalt DW235G or the Milwaukee uh, half inch hole shooter. Some other brands of pistol grip drills. You got a little bit of alternative. You did get a midship, midship handle here. You did get the advantage, and I'll have to show this a little bit later. Can't really see inside there, but this reverse switch is very stiff. It has a reversible brush card. Brush type universal AC motors have essentially a timing, which is known as magnetic slip angle. When you run them in the reverse, it reverses the relations of the brushes to the uh, field winding, and that's how it runs the motor in reverse, but the slip angle isn't quite the same. You can lose 20 to 30% of the power. Most drills and reversible power tools lose 20 to 30% of the power when they go in reverse. Unless they have a rotating brush card. So now I was only reversing the polarity of the brushes themselves. It's actually physically rotating them to make sure you have the proper slip angle. So this actually belts out full power in forward and reverse. And to tell you the truth, versus the half inch drills from the 70s and 80s, which had the metal gearbox, this was a quantum leap. I mean, those old Black & Decker ones um, were all sleeve bearings. They had one metal or one ball thrust bearing. This, I suspect, is going to have several bearings because it runs pretty smooth. Not on the spindle because it does move in and out. I suspect we're going to have ball bearings on the motors, maybe some needle bearings on the reduction gears. Still have a metal gear case here. This time with four screws, once again, full power and four in reverse, seven amps, and a decent RPM, 800 RPM. This one kind of hard to see, but this is a Type 3, so whatever revisions, types on power tools, uh, is the same as software reversions, so when they made some type of change, it would go from Type 1 to Type 2, in this case, a Type 3. Otherwise, as far as a budget half-inch drill, for most people, this would work absolutely fine. Pretty smooth two-finger trigger with a lock, so if you're mixing uh, cement or thin set, drywall compound, that type of stuff, you can lock it. Has the most overkill strain relief I've ever seen. The cord is actually loose. This isn't one piece molded, so you're not stuck replacing whole strain relief when you need to replace the cord. Only straight cut gears. So not the quietest. Not the greatest chuck. That's a sheet metal collar. It isn't 100% billet steel chuck. But nonetheless, what, this was a budget drill. This was going to be half the price. Kind of hard to show on camera, but it definitely has quite a bit of airflow. They were trying to prevent it from overheating like the old Black & Decker's did. You may ask, didn't you do a review uh, just a few months ago about a Black & Decker half-inch drill? I did. This is the DR560. The DR550. The DR560. They just tend to make it a little... They just... Actually, what they managed to do is take already a budget drill and cheap out on it just a little bit more. Uh, and I did take this one apart. I did mention that it has mostly ball and needle bearings except for the spindle itself. But both sets of reduction gears and the motor were ball and needle bearings. It also has a rotating brush card. They did kind of make it more compact. They did kind of squish it all together. Both still have 7 amp motors. But where this one's 800 RPM, what they decided to do on this one... We can see this is the 2020 unit, and I did mention this just a second ago. This is the 2010 unit, so 10 years later, the revision. They decided to speed it up just a little bit, 900 RPM. But, of course, they maintain their profit margin. Some things actually got a little worse. What was a cast aluminum gearbox went to a plastic gearbox. This actually has a little belt hook, which might be handy in some situations. No belt hook. They eliminated that. This actually has a big, comfortable two-finger trigger on it. They went with a cheaper one-finger trigger on this unit. So the DR560 is... It's even amazing that value engineering, 
even on cheap tools where the new 2020 model of the cheap Black & Decker half-inch drill is actually cheaper <laughs> than old 2010 model Black & Decker half-inch drill. It's just like, my goodness, how cheap do you have to go? Nonetheless, it's still, you know, an okay drill. I did show this will run a 2 and 9 16 self-feed bit through dry fur. Barely. It will just do it. I suspect this one will do a little bit better. I'm just going to run a half, one and a half inch spade bit because I can't find my self-feed bit right now. All right, we're just going to do this simple hole, but this is a, something you commonly do. You might use a large spade bit that your normal 3 8 inch uh, drill wouldn't uh, deal with. Plus, I don't want to run the self-feed bit. This does take what we consider nominal size uh, side handles like you'd find on DeWalt half-inch drills. Need to dig one up for this. right near the end there. I need to sharpen this self-feed bit. This is ridiculous. And it did stall for like a nanosecond right at breakthrough. But nonetheless, that's what you expect. It's quite a bit of force um, right when you're breaking through because of course you're trying to knock through a big chunk of the material. But this certainly would do what you would expect a half inch drill to do. Definitely not gonna be quite as torquey as the professional drills just because what they tend to do is have more compact, they have the same amperage or similar like the DeWalt DW235G, only has a 7.8 amp motor few more bearings on the spindle for power delivery. The big deal about those is that they have higher speed motors, same amps, but the motors are more expensive because they are like vacuum cleaner motors, spin at thousands of RPM faster, which allows them to have a reduced or uh, a lower gear ratio for the same output speed, but because of the faster motor, that reduced gear ratio means that they deliver a lot more torque. It's cheaper to make a motor that spins slower. T20s here. Overall, this 2010 unit really, for a cheap drill, really wasn't that bad. Uh, it's just kind of sad how on the DR560, uh, they just really cheapened out on it. Although they did put in a bunch of ball and needle bearings. Both of these, this and the newer one, are still much improved. People have a fondness for those old 70s, 80s Black & Deckers, but that was just because they were common. People's parents had them, grandparents had them. But those were absolutely terrible drills with Bakelite brush guides. and oh, I burned up and just torn up so many of them. A lot of them were real weak. They were 550 RPM for the five, half inch versions. And oh, many of them were th only 3 amp motors. Only the like final ones in the 80s were 3.5 amp motors. Uh, this drill would absolutely smoke any of those old, uh, you know, home utility grade Black & Decker drills. Anyway, these are pl pretty decent screws. They are plastic intent screws, pretty deep threads, T20s, showing uh, it is more modern. They're using Torx in order to get the two case halves apart. We do need to take the gearbox off first. These, of course, it's what's holding it together. It nests over it. And I don't think there could be. I mean, that's insane. Uh, 
there's like a wisp of grease in there. Well, that's how they save some money is by not having any grease. They at least... It's kind of interesting. Usually the motor input gear goes in through this side and then this reduction to the secondary idler gear goes down. Instead, what they've done is they've flipped that around because, relatively speaking, the motor spindle actually sticks out pretty far. And what it does is allows them to shorten up the gear case a little bit, which makes it a little bit interesting. But we do, we have fine teeth on the first stage. They get a little thicker on the second stage, and then, of course, they get real coarse on the third stage. So that's nice and proper. So the way these gears work is that they have this little pressed on collar to maintain the leading there. We can see it's just a shaft of the pressed on machine gear and then we have this big gap here. It makes it a little bit weird, but I suppose it's, you know, it's okay. I suppose it's okay considering what the drill is. Um, and we can see how coarse the final output is. So, besides that, it did run pretty smooth, it deliver, and we can see, or if I light it up, maybe you can see now, indeed, we have needle bearings on those idler gears, which is a big improvement over the old versions. We can see here, needle bearings on those idler gears. We can see it's just a sleeve bearing for the main spindle. And down there, we can see that's actually a needle bearing on the front of the motor. So like the newer one, it was mostly a uh, ball needle bearing, which is fairly impressive to tell you the truth. And we have another interesting feature here. What do we see? A couple of alignment pegs. So when you take this apart and you put it back together, they're aligning through those two holes there with this so it doesn't have a full metal butt diaphragm, but it does have a partially metal diaphragm, which is also, uh, I'm glad to see that, rather than the bearings just being in the plastic housing. But when you take it apart and put it back together, what it does is make sure the diaphragm maintains its alignment so that the gears, well, I'll do this example, so that the gears, when you put them in, they don't end up cockeying one way or the other, because when that happens, and I can show you here. It's a big deal. And surprisingly, like Makita drills, a lot of them don't. It's a big deal because gears, a big portion of their lifespan is making sure they're absolutely straight so they have a nice even engagement. So when you have a diaphragm that's aligned, when you take it apart and put it back together, they go together absolutely straight. On some drills, they don't. And so what happens is when you put it together, they can just cockeye just a little bit like this or like this. And so what ends up happening is you have just a bunch of pressure right on the corners of the teeth and they start wearing down quickly. And as that pressure spot starts migrating down the tooth, it can cause the gears to wear out 10 times faster. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, the, the lifespan of bearings and gears is dictated by the quality of machining and the quality of, uh, of alignment. It's really no joke. It's really surprising. Let me get the rest of the screws out of here. Pull these two case halves apart. I always kind of want to get a little bit stuck. You kind of got to work them. Ease it apart. Push on that reverse switch so it doesn't come out with the top case half, which it's going to do anyway. All right. We can see part of the where they save money, that is PP glass fiber. So that's a polypropylene case, not a uh, PA6 or a nylon case. But I don't give them too much criticism there. Had to pause for a second because this is a spring I've never really seen inside of a tool before. But I finally figured out it is the detent spring. There's a little slot in the slider there. And so boop, 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 boop. That's the detent spring. And it actually hides down right in there like that that was a confusing spring to uh, figure out where it goes of course we do have a rotating brush card so what's happening here is this is pushing on in that slot it's in this lever which levers on a little guide so when you reverse it what we can see here is it reverses both the polarity because there's a set of contacts here and another set here 
but it's physically rotating the brushes. And I'm just surprised that Black & Decker would go with that design because that's obviously a lot more expensive than just having a simple s switch. Um, but uh, I'm kind of glad they did it. Just don't know how that made it through the engineering decisions. Um, where they decide to go for it. We can see a ball bearing in the back of the motor. Once again, there's a needle bearing in the diaphragm and the front. So this is all ball needle bearing except for the primary spindle. Really, it's not, you know, and we can see that it has fine contact. So it is still a pretty high speed motor. We have copper plated um, clock springs to the brushes. These actually look like they're the exact same size as in a DeWalt drill. Um, a DeWalt half inch drill. Not a lot else to say. I mean, to tell you the truth, we take this trigger out. Let's take a quick look at it. It's a Defond. And God, I'm having a hard time reading that. Hundred. And... It looks like. There, I can zoom way in. Now we can both read it. 8 amps, 125 volts, so they're saving some money there. It's a 7 amp unit, and they're only having it rated at 8 amps. This is going to be the little uh, variable speed. So if you're doing heavy, mid medium, or variable speed operations, then yeah, you do risk bringing out this, burning out the switch because it has very little overrating rather than being like a 10 or a 12 amp or something. So of course they're saving a little money there. But overall... To tell you the truth, this slightly older model is better <laughs> than the DR560. Mainly for the fact that you do get a more ergonomic trigger and you do get a uh, metal gearbox. Even though it has the lowest amount of grease I've ever seen in any drill, ever. I mean, they just wet the gears, so I'll put a bunch of grease in there. Other than that, just wanted to do a little video about this old drill. Uh, it took me a while. <laughs> Anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.